Just use the most recent buff. Not going to 30 minutes, but here we go, guys. The draft for game number one has begun. Get hyped. Because this could be the biggest match that we have in a long time. Yeah, uh, definitely. I would say this is gonna, the largest stakes match we're going to have until we have DreamHack Summer, which is the next Worlds event. Uh, this is a clash between, you know, arguably the best team in China and the best team in Korea. And considering those are the two regions that got one through four in the, <laughs> the spring championship, I mean, they're pretty good at the game. Well, no surprise from E Star seeing the Karazim ban. I don't know if you saw the the gift the other day of uh, oh that palm? Mary Day landing the God. palm in Star League. That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. That was like a <laughs> split second reaction. What, what a stupid. He guy. made it look Z casual too. He's just like boop. yeah, just like, just like boop. Just like throws out his <laughs> fist. Like yeah, you're good, bro. Keep on fighting, homie. <laughs> There was a Zool, that was the band from MVP Black, yeah. uh, Zul, really powerful on this map. Um, he, allows you, uh, he basically can solo two lanes, so you'll often see him either rotating from top to mid or mid to bottom um, and just controlling the map, also putting pressure on those towers, so whenever you do eventually get an immortal in those lanes, they, you know, they, eat, they push easier. And then the first pick on Illidan from E-Star, which they've done a few times here in Gold League. Yeah, quick response out of MVP just to get their frontliner as well. Um, I'm, you know, no thrall early pickup. There's different preferences here for Infernal Shrines, especially when you consider the, the presence that Illidan and Sonya have when fighting over those shrines. It makes perfect sense. Uh, ETC locked in rather early here by E-Star with Uther. So just rounding out their frontline, leaving their ranged assassins uh, for last. I'm so intrigued by the the low priority on, on KT in, in Asia compared to what we see uh, in North America and Europe. Um, yeah, it's a bit lower. Um, I think this is probably the right way to draft right now. There's so many good damages in the game it's right true. now that, uh, you know, if you get like your heavy, like, you, you have the comps you're going to build your hero around, which right now are Illidan and Sonya. And no matter how these bands go, I mean, look how, like, with how these bands are going right now, with Abathur being bad, probably a Rhaegar ban from E Star. For, oh, no, yeah. good for Rainer. Okay. I like that actually a lot. Just um, trying to limit the, the ranged options, and of course, I mean, Illidan's just really good at tearing through big health bars. Or Rain, yeah. Rainer, excuse me. So really like these bands so far from both these teams. And there's still, like, if you look just look at the damage on the table still, like, there's still so much available. We're going to be seeing the Tasteron to do a support style from MVP Black Mix with the Sonya to see if they want to lock in their Warrior or their next damage here. And there's the KT. This is this is good setup for the KT because they're going to be able to get Murden outside of this. So they're going to have Murden, Tron to KT. That's a lot of CC and a lot of burst potential onto one target. Yeah, I mean, just, just the lockdown alone against Illidan. If uh, he gets hit by that gravity lapse, he's going to be in a really bad spot in general um especially in the late game kt is going to also be critical for helping with those shrines just being able to throw the flame strike they also have of course only the front line and the size for him to go out as well but wow Jaina sylvanas Jaina surprising to me um, yeah over lee ming yeah over lee ming it's definitely interesting maybe to try and kite the sonya just a little bit extra burst to see how good the ring of frost are um, that's the most important thing. And then Sylvanas, I mean, Sylvanas is probably on maps like this and Battle for Eternity, like, almost top priority. Yeah. When, you know, whenever you have a Sylvanas on your team, it can turn an Immortal that would barely get front wall into an Immortal that will get fort. I mean... because of how powerful her trade is. Yeah, ever since they changed her in general, though, it's just like, she's great, but like you mentioned, you lock down the structures, the value of that Immortal goes up, ex or the Punisher goes up exponentially, really. Um... Uh, cool picks. I'm, I'm actually really excited to see like Sylvanas in general nowadays because there's always that chance that mind control will be picked instead of Wailing. Wailing's hard to pass up, but in the event that we do see mind control actually used effectively, it would be really, really interesting uh, in my opinion. Yeah, we'll have to see if today is the day that we finally see mind control in uh, Korea, China, both of them. Asia. Asia. That whole, that whole region over there. Yeah. Those stats, Thanks everyone man. for tuning in. This is uh, a pretty important match. Uh, it means nothing going into the. Uh, I guess like the winner of this gets like the better seed versus Edward Gaming. They won't play them probably until the the winners finals of the playoffs. But um, like you said, Jake, a lot of pride on the line. E Star feels like they were you know screwed out of the Spring Championship because Zhao T couldn't go to Korea. They've been, it's, I mean, what? They were denied going to PAX. They were denied going to BlizzCon. Oh, man. They've, I mean, they've, they've been screwed over a lot of times. Pretty much every international event, um, even in, you know, Asia, they, they've, had, they've had trouble uh, getting their full roster there. But here they are on their home turf with 
MVP Black currently on a ridiculous winning spree. It's, what, 24-plus at this point, uh, where they have not lost a, a single game. So they're looking to keep that rolling, but Eastar, they want to be the ones to end it. The gifts people tweet me, man. <laughs> what you get? It's just like a reaction to me, uh, the two of us casting together, and it's too early to to see things like this. Uh, it's too shout it's out too to early, you. People. Shout out to you, Chris Gansler. I just saw that that as well, <laughs> dude. He's he's hilarious. He is. Oh, 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 the jam! Wow, <laughs> I forgot to warn you, Jake. Production tape. You guys turned down the stream volume. <laughs> Okay, we, we survived the jams, everyone. Uh, 6 a.m. wake-up call. I hope everyone is now awake as we are jumping in to Infernal Shrine's game number one between E-Star and MVP Black. We are loading into the game. And here we go. Here's the question. Are they going to have an overlay for us? Uh, well, here we go, guys. E the Tiger playing Uther, NCC playing ETC, Zhao T playing Ilden, Zing C playing Jaina, and I didn't see who the last one was. Congrats. And here, are MVP Sake <laughs> playing Tassadar, Kyocha on Sonya, Rich playing Taronda, Mary Day play. Wait, no. They're missing a hero. They threw me off. They're missing a hero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's shit. only four there. <laughs> There's only four there. Once I said uh, Rich playing Taronda and not Sonya, I was like, huh? Why is that happening? And then there's like four. Is that guy tilted? Hey, that there was the go, longest guys. message ever. It just kept going. That All was right. a long message. All right, so this is indeed MVP on the right and the red. This is game number one, everyone. And on the blue side, that is E Star uh, coming in as well. We'll see if we can get an overlay for the next game going in. But uh, for the time being, apologies for that. Everyone thinks MVP Black, but one of the casters is going to win 2-1. That is that is crazy. Well, here we go, guys. Uh, taking a look at the level 1 talents. In Korea and China, we only see Paralysis at level 1. Uh, for Sylvanas, that is the extended duration on her trait, just allowing you to get more value whenever you use your uh, W on forts to just uh, help siege structures down. Yeah, with the new level 1 options, I mean, Paralysis is just going to get the most value in most situations, even if you're on Tomb or m most maps. I, I would honestly go for Paralysis in most cases. It's a bit torn in North America, actually, though. Yeah. Um, we do see a little bit of damage going down on the Rich, though. He's trading very well with Zhao T, getting yep. him very, very low. Aggressive. You cannot trade with uh, Sonya as level, uh, early uh, as Illidan. Sonya uh, is a monster. Slam doing oh, so much damage here. Stormbolt does not end up connecting. Mary Day does send up the Lunar Flare, of course, not going to connect with that as well. Zhao T going deep in here. He gets the Evasion Pop. Nice heals from his team. Jaina does rotate up. A big Blizzard comes down, and Rich is taking a lot of damage. Nice wow. Stormbolt turnaround, and they annihilate Zhao T. Zhao being a little bit over-aggressive. I mean, diving in, like, sub 50% health with multiple stuns available, four members that rotated up. Like, I don't know if he was aware KT was in the bush, but even kill toss was not even necessary um, for that gank. see here uh, how they want to adjust their aggression. I agree with you that Zal T uh, going a little bit too ham here, uh, having wanting to prove something, uh, but uh, you know you gotta you gotta pace yourself a little better. Um, we do see that Rich is gonna go ahead and control this point. That's one of the powers of Sonya on this map is she can just spin for days and uh, if uncontested she's you know one of the fastest solo clears for that. Level four finally hit by both teams. Let's see if E Star wants to. Um, pressure it and no they don't they want to go for a tri lane push here in the top oh no but oh zao t God. super low dwarf toss in sign looking for that storm bolt but it's still on cooldown not able to get the kill on zao t who will barely get out of here but it looks like uh, we have tiger going down from that final chain bomb you gotta respect the Murdens Ronda, man. It's you know one of the classic duos for a reason. It's just the easy, one of the easiest setups for Toronto to follow up with when you get that Hunter's Mark. Even if you don't get the Hunter's Mark, you know with the uh, Gravity Laps follow up there, or even just the setup with the Gravity Laps as we saw for the kill on Tiger. It's just such a destructive combo. You have to respect it. So this is kind of uh, a really bad spot here for E Star. Not only did Sonia manage to pick up the final forty defenders to zero in favor of MVP Black, but they lost that one hero in top lane, and we have almost a full level lead on the side of MVP already with that Punisher uh, still in the bottom. Man, 
already were at a, a, a disgusting start for MVP Black. And for those of you who haven't been watching Gold League, every single match that both MVP Black and E-Star have played have been just utter stomps, some of the fastest games I've ever casted. And the fact that we're already seeing MVP Black just take full control over this game just shows you the, the tier difference in, in these teams right now. Is MVP Black just feels so good right now. All right, Mary Day actually did a bit of a oh. poor pathing there and got caught out of place. Just one little misclick. He went around that corner, and because of that, NCCC finds him and blows him up. Caster Curse, hype up one team, they start dying. <laughs> Go figure. Battle Memento picked up onto Ronda, uh, my personal favorite, level 7. Sometimes you see the Lunar Flare range, but uh, Mary Day knows how to stick with his warrior and how to stick with his uh, Kael Thoth, so he'll always be in range for that gravity lapse most of the time. So wanting to go for uh, more cooldown on the, uh, you know, just to get his heals out more. Zalti being collapsed upon here, though. Yeah, Zalti has been very aggressive in this game. The chain bomb will be enough to kill him. Great gravity lapse there from Sake, picking up yet another kill. I believe that is Illidan's third death or just second? Regardless, second. it's second death. not good. Yeah, he is... Uh... Got to be a little bit more mindful of his positioning here in, uh, in lane. Taking a look at uh, level 7 talents. Looks like we're going to be seeing Barb Shot on Sylvanas over um, Unstable Poison, which is a bit different from what we see most of the time. If you see Paralysis at level 1, you see Unstable Poison at level 7. So a bit of a change up here. Uh, of course, we're going to be seeing Cleanse on Uther. I mean, with this much CC on the end of MPU Black, you can't not go Cleanse. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much critical in these kind of situations. Um... Yeah, all right. Well, moving in, we do see Zalti manages to dodge that stun coming out his way. This time he will live on. The second shrine will be spawning, this time a Mortar Punisher in the center of the map. And we are going to have to see Estar fight for this. There's no level 10 on the side of MVP Black. They pretty much conceded the last one trying to split push with Sylvanas, and they gained zero benefit from it. But once again, they're actually just backing away and throwing Illidan on the uh, Fallen Shaman camp in the top left. We'll see... Uh... If this can get some value, they are a little bit behind on experience, but not too far behind. Uh, but right now, MVP Black uh, bound to hit level 10 first. And, you know, I'm really curious about this Jaina pickup here. Uh, you know, we, we briefly touched on it in the draft. Uh, I, you know, I'm wondering what value they plan on getting out of it. Maybe yeah. at level 16. I mean, she's got good, safe, clear. And when it comes to fighting over the shrines, she's fantastic. Um... But it's, it is definitely a bit odd. Now, once again, we're actually seeing the split push. They actually grab the Bruiser Camp for the top lane and throw uh, Sylv and crew down in bottom trying to get some push. But the immediate response is here. Already 33 Skeletal Defenders picked up by Sonya. They just left Sonya there alone to pick this up while they look for map pressure elsewhere. But as a result, due to their split pressure, they're getting a lot of experience if they completely even things out versus MVP Black. And as long as they can control the damage from this Punisher, they're going to be in a great spot. Yeah, we'll have to see uh, how much damage they are going to take from this. They are stalling this out, waiting until uh, uh, they have a little bit more experience, a little bit better map pressure. Of course, they want to wait for uh, Rich as well to rotate down and be able to push with this. Both teams having level 10. It will be metamorphosis on Illidan. I haven't really seen uh, the hunt once uh, from uh, China or Korea yeah. just yet. It's uh, it's certainly fun, and it's it's great for picking off backliners, but if you think about hunting into, like, Meriden, Sonia, Taranda, even if you're hunting onto Kael'thas, they're just going to dive on you so fast, and you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, it's uh, way too risky against this comp. It will be the Starfall as well. Not going to be seeing Shadow Stalk uh, from the Taranda, going for a little bit more damage here. Sign looking for the Storm Bolt there, as he knows his team can get the follow-up. There goes Toomey getting hit by the Punisher, taking a lot of damage. NCC low. Wailing Arrow does come out, but not getting much value here. Rich getting almost free poke. Uh, you know, two Heroics were used there and, uh, from uh, E-Star and getting no value at all. Zaozi actually pulling them all back. Does get hit by the single storm bolt, but the follow-up is not available. Yes, the fort did go down in favor of MVP Black, but all things considered, um, you know, it's not the worst, it's not the worst case. They're they're very, very close in terms of experience. They can look for a fight pre-13. And again, they have that great push potential. So even if they get a tower or two down with Toomey here in the top lane, who is very safe to push, uh, that will really help them close close that gap. Three kills to one in favor of MVP Black. NCC in an awkward spot. The Dwarf toss over the wall. Can he get the Storm Bolt? No, he's not going to. Uh, Liz Tiger was also there. Had the cleanse available. Would not have been able to secure that kill. Um, you know, I'm going to be keeping my eye on this Jaina in this fight because, you know, you talk about the wave clear, you know, but the problem with her wave clear is it's such a long cooldown. So the moment you use that, as Rich is being do dove in on here in a really bad spot, spinning gets hit by the Mosh Pit and, ooh, 
It's an expensive oh. mosh pit that's really unnecessary when you consider it's a it's a full team versus one. And yeah, with the other four members of MVP in the bottom lane, they're just happy to, to push. They know that mosh is on cooldown for another 100 seconds. That's an immense amount of time. And it's just like an unnecessary resource spent to guarantee a kill that you already had. Yeah, I agree. Um, they had that kill, hundred percent secured. But I mean, it, maybe if Rich had thirteen for Mystical Spear, right? For the uh, for the pull but, away, but definitely it's not there yet. Yeah, they're not thirteen. Yet. Oh no! Oh, Sign gets the leaping onto the point here. They catch Tiger out with the gravity laps. You get the Lunar Flare follow up. Will he go down? Yes, he will. So nice. Uh... Nice camp invade there coming out from MVP Black. Yeah, they knew exactly what to expect, oh. right? I mean, that's a very common thing. The forest wall is perfect here to be completely locked down. And two kills picked up just like that. MVP Black, not only did they get the bottom four out of that push where they had lost a hero, but then they pick up two kills and steal a Merc camp. They are just on fire right now. We'll see here uh, how MVP Black wants to keep this pressure going. They are down one for it to the two of E-Star. They are ahead, of course, in the structure count, and they've won the first two Punishers and in position to win the third. Level 13 has been picked up by uh, both teams, and this is something that we've seen uh, recently here. Um, Zuno's been doing it a lot in North America, and now that we're seeing the Chinese and the Korean teams do it, uh, we're seeing Burning Rage at level 13 on Murden over Thunderstrike. Uh, you know, there's uh, you know just extra AOE damage when you're in the middle of everyone, and then, of course, on maps like this where you're fighting yeah. around minions constantly, it's hard to get Thunderstrike value. Uh, Zhao T does manage to dodge the Lunar Flare. It's a big deal for him because it was going to be Dicey. Power Slide in. They get them a nice Starfall placement there but rich is getting focused rather quickly the wailing comes out divine shield the last moment to keep etc alive but ntc has to back away and zao t will be falling to the flame strike rich is, uh, no, does not know how to die there the storm bolt is on to tiger there nice force oh, wall follow no. up that's going to be another two for nothing kill and they've got a big push here in the bottom lane jake they they tried to pop everything on the rich i think the ring of frost only hit one person um but despite it being only tasked to ronda duo support they just could not kill sonya that was so tough of a fight for the Eastar, and now they're in a lot of trouble here. I mean, Rich was just getting heals from everything. It looks like the Punisher dives in, and Zhao T's gonna go down. Excuse me, that was Sylvanas in that case, but only two members still standing right now. This Punisher is going to secure the bottom keep at this rate, and man, it seems like Eastar is just crumbling under the pressure of MVP Black. Yep, that's a lot of damage, and that's gonna be the death of NCC there. They're gonna try and get this fourth down, or keep down as fast as they can. Don't know if they're willing to contest the uh, core here. And yeah, they're going to take the safe option and back out. Uh, Punisher just way too low. Spawns up in six seconds. Um, but they've got a three-level lead for the moment. About to be a two-level lead. They're up nine kills to two. They've got the first keep of the game, Jake. Uh, they have 16 tier talents. Uh, this is... This is a huge tier for this team. I mean, Sonya becomes un uh, almost unkillable. Uh, Murden becomes un basically unkillable. <laughs> and then, of course, you get Kael'thas' single target burst. Uh, this is a huge power spike for MVP Black. Yeah, it's it's a massive power spike. And you also now have to worry about the Ranger uh, with with KT, right? Like, you've already got the, this big range damage from Kael'thas, but suddenly these owls are going to start just chunking through your health pool. It's, uh, it's definitely scary. Oh. Two levels down is E-Star. They need to find that experience. And even when they're soaking safely with Sylvanas in the bottom lane, who is now rotating up to her team. It becomes risky because MVP Black is not playing passively. They, they've been invading all game long. Yeah, um, they have just been aggressive. They've been, you know, taking camps. They've been doing everything they can to just, you know, edge out some more and more experienced leads here. A little bit of light damage going out onto this front wall. They do go ahead and pop the Phoenix as well. Just try to catch them with the force wall, and they're just going to keep pushing this lead further and further. And maybe Black, when they play, they're always thinking two, three steps ahead. They're, you know, they, they're wanting to make sure, you know, that they do eventually hit 20 way before E-Star. Even if a mistake happens on their end where they lose a few players, they're making sure they do everything they can to min-max their experience and uh, try and get 21st. Well, a small benefit, we do have that mercenary camp pushing out the top lane, so the top lane is completely in favor of V-Star. And this is actually, it, it's good and bad. It's good because, yes, they have presence on the map, but it's bad because they can't soak that lane. And they need all the experience they can get right now to really close that gap with MVP Black. Now, Sonya is in top. MVP Black has shown, so this is a moment where E-Star knows they're safe to grab this camp. And that will put them very close to level 16 before this next shrine. Um, take a look at the talents. Interesting pickup here on Sylvanas. I mean, it's it's not interesting in the sense that it's a weird pickup because we do see Windrunner a lot at level 13 on Sylvanas. I think that's the go-to talent right now. But against this much CC, uh, this much burst, I mean, we recently saw Big Impact bust out the Will of the Forsaken, um, and that could definitely be good versus this much CC here. But NCC goes for the power slide, gets two people in the back line. There's the Wailing Arrow into Ring of Frost combo, and there is the Jaina burst taking out Taronda and Kael'thas instantly. 
Zingsi with the big play, but he does go down himself. Sign diving into the back. Toomey using that haunting wave. Double haunting wave, but the force wall is in place to lock him in. Heels come out at the last moment. NCC trying to lock him down. Zhao T diving around, but it's what? not going to be enough. And Toomey goes down. MVP Black, they are just impervious to anything. Three versus five. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god. Sonia Tassadar Muradin just never let MVP Black draft that ever ever again that was ridiculous so the problem that ended up happening there is they blew their their entire uh, heroic pull onto the you Two know kills. double yeah. combo where they yeah. took out Toronto Kael'thas and after that they had no damage you think that would fight. be enough though <laughs> like, I think if Jaina had survived a little bit longer uh, that fight was theirs but they blew her up the moment she cast that combo she got the ring of frost blizzard and it just it, that was lights out but regardless that was an impressive team fight from MVP Black I mean that force wall covered like every single option from that haunting wave of Toomey they're dumb this is a dumb team. Go play a different game. Go go make money off of League of Legends or something. You guys are too good. Three-level lead right now. About to be a uh, two-level lead for MVP Black here as they're getting closer to those Storm tier talents. Uh, Force Wall does go down, but Zalti able to escape NCC having to use Power Slide. This is going to be a pretty healthy punisher here, Jake. We're 14 and a half minutes in the game. The Keep Wall is already down. This could be game for MVP Black. This could be it. They're pushing into that mid-keep, guys. They are very much getting ready to push it down and we do see the last defense of e star approaching etc taking a ton of damage gonna need those heal starfall in place slowing them down and the keep will go down very early but the push is not done the punisher still has almost all of its hit points remaining and this could very well be game number one well, they're going for the core. Jake here. Zati very low. Ring of Frost does connect with two people there, but not really much follow-up. Toomey getting low. MVP Rich very deep here. Punisher still half HP, Jake. Tassadar getting very low. Zingsi trying to get the combo. Oh. There is the mosh pit going down. Catches three members, but they do end up interrupting it. The Punisher's going to come in. Two members down for E-Star. Core is at 50% here, and I think this is going to be game, Jake, as MVP Black with a destructive game. 16 kills to four. It's going to take game number one. Wow. I mean, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, MVP Black, they played it perfectly. With they, even the small situations where we saw that Sonya pick off in the top lane, so many resources were spent. The, the turnaround there from MVP, taking out the bottom fort, hearthing back, and then catching them at the Fallen Shaman camp, getting two kills out of that as well. I mean, that's the one moment where it looked like there was some potential for Eastar to bring it, bring it back, but it didn't happen, man. I mean, I got to be critical. Jaina pick made no sense. Got no value. Yeah, it was landing those monster ring of frost, but I don't know. It she's like her. It, they need to lower the cooldown on her combo or something. With how many nerfs she's received over the t over the years, like with, with either with mobility nerfs, right. uh, damage nerfs. Like how many times have they reworked water elemental? Right. Yeah. You know it. it may, maybe they need to revert some of those changes because right now with the lack, lack of ice block. Stop looking at me. You're tilting me. You're tilting me, Jake. You tilted me so hard, dude. I'm agreeing with your point. <laughs> Too early for this, man. <laughs> Oh my god, but yeah, the Jaina, I mean, of course, Rich is the MVP there, unkillable monster, uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh MVP god. Rich, yeah, like, did, did he die? No, I don't think so. Um, so yeah, you, no, he which one would you be of, of these three? Of these three? The one in the middle. Yeah, I agree, man. I'm gorgeous. Gorgioso. Look at that, man. Look at him. He looks so nice. Bright and early. I'm just going to go ahead and say, when Jake and I, after Town Hall, I was like, he was like, yeah, I want to cast. So I was like, cool, let's do it. I don't want to solo cast it. It's a big match. He's like, I'm going to make an overlay. I'm like, you know what? Goldie didn't give us overlays. We don't have to do that. We can just do the, you know, we can just cast the clean base. Like, oh, I'm going to make an overlay. This is the shit he comes up with. <laughs> this, this is what this guy makes for his overlay. Sorry, man. It is, it is, it was too early for cameras anyway, so... <laughs> Well, that, I mean, that was just, that was so one-sided. And I, and again, I already brought up the Jaina, but hopefully they draft a little bit better this next time because, I don't know, that's not what the first place and the second place team should look like when they met, when they put face off against each other. Right. I mean, we, we definitely saw um, some promise with the Jaina pick of what they were looking to do, right? I mean, in, in some ways, you can look at, at Jaina uh, with the Wombo of Wailing as like a huge enabler for Illidan to just dance all over the opposing team. And maybe that's what they were looking to do. But I just feel that the pressure that you get out of someone like Li Ming, even though Li Ming's not really great for clearing the shrines, 
I just feel like she provides invaluable uh, damage pressure and safety um, like over Jaina. Jaina just doesn't have that same kind of presence in a team fight. Yeah. Very easy for, I mean, because the loss of Ice Block at 13, you know, no more Sprint, no more Bolt. I know it's been a while since she's had Sprint, but... It's just too risky. Uh, what do you do as Jaina when Sonya's on you? Like, if she had Numbing Blast, like, say, like, level 7 or something, like, some kind of control earlier, maybe Jaina would be, like, a little bit more of a safe pick. But, like you said, losing Ice Block at 13 is a, is a huge... I mean... Bolt was well, bad even enough. Before that, even before Bolt. she lost Ice Block, she was barely seeing play, right? right. It was very rarely, um, only in like weird combo comps where you would like to do Ring of Frost outside of Mosh Pit or Ring of Frost outside of um, Devouring Maw. Um, yeah. That we just, you know, but she's just not in a good spot right now. She's got she's got really good burst. Her burst is still insane. If you land a yeah, Ring of Frost of and you get your full Blizzard Kona Cold combo in it, it is insane. But the cooldown on it is so significantly longer than every other hero's combos in the game that even if you do get those kills like we saw, Jaina was useless for the rest of that fight. Yeah. Uh, well, she gets she she had spent her abilities and she's just like, what do I do? Absorb damage? And that yeah, was her with the auto nerf. You yeah. know what are they? Jaina can't do much. Yeah, it's very we'll see. true. We'll see how they want to draft this game number two. Um, we have yet to see the map. Yeah, we don't know where we're going yet. Um, I don't know where your star will bring MVP Black, to be honest with you. I don't know if there is a good map. Maybe try to throw them off balance, but even then, MVP Black, there's, there's, there's no map they're going to be weak on. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, maybe like Black Hearts. That, yeah, that's the first but one that comes then, to mind. But like, are they going to bust out some Cloud9 cheese? Like, what are they going to do? possible well i mean we, can, we can't really count east star out of it yet I, I honestly feel like that game was 100 percent won in the draft um mb black just had a much significant uh draft for that map um east star is a fantastic team uh even though they didn't they only made top four at worlds um a lot of them a lot of people still consider them the second best team in the world because they do not have zal t there um so i gotta say though zal t you know, got punished hard in that game yeah, did. his illidan didn't look scary. It looked like he was, you know, he was playing skill shot absorption. That's what his job was. <laughs> All of that for that. Uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. It's very <laughs> early here. I believe it's almost seven where Jake is at. Thanks for waking up with me, buddy. Yeah, um, I've been I've been used to the sleep schedule. With, this is like week three now, so I'm used to being up this early. But Jake, being a man. Dude, when I was when I was doing town hall and you said in the chat you'd be solo casting, I was like, I can't let my brother do that. That's brutal. Some people not some fun. people like to solo cast. Like there are definitely casters out there that prefer solo casting. I think a mole trap um, back in the StarCraft days, he was much better at solo casting. And yeah, I agree. I know Kaldor likes to solo cast all himself as well, but uh, I'm not one of those people, and I don't think you are either. No, I I prefer having a conversation with someone yeah, as opposed to building my own story but i mean look at these um, this trio they're having so yeah, much fun Dude, she never yeah. looks away from the camera though it's tilting me it's like she's staring yeah. into my soul i actually have the translation coming in here the guy on the left is saying uh mvp black is just so significantly better than the rest of the world right now because they go over to tempostorm.com they check out the hero guides as well as the <laughs> written by their fantastic troll. lineup of uh writers as well as players <laughs> they have the best manager in the world so uh really great uh mb black using that resource and she's like yeah i hope the rest of the world starts catching on we're trying to spread that love here in the chinese scene as well <laughs> i hate you so much <laughs> <laughs> by the way while you're there check out the meta snapshot we'll tell you exactly how to win your hero league games yep you can do that too well right dude we should name these the the, the our our caster or caster they have friends. names jake no we should name them i don't know their real names um one of them i think the guy in the name is on the right is named miss or something mm. miss joy ah. and the guy on the left is miss joy like yeah, i know his name. from like pokemon nurse mm, joy that's nurse joy <laughs> mvp black okay so we're going to sky um, temple he started decided to go with a uh, second pick as sure. opposed to uh our first pick as opposed to map pick excuse me so yeah this is I, uh, I love that that uh the map pick interface i i wish all events did that honestly it's so smart yeah it's, it's, really it's good. always great to just be able to see um 
you know exactly who's picking the map, who's going for first pick. And we'll see if that first pick works off for Eastar again. Now, we, we they immediately locked in Illidan in the last game. They banned Zul, I believe, and they locked in Illidan. Yeah. And Zelti did just did not look uh, like a, a dominant Illidan because the way that MVP Black played. I like his haircut. I nice. I'd pet his hair. Who has the better haircut, Zoya? The other guy. Okay. Kyocha really needs to up his hair game. I don't know. Kyocha washed his hair today. I can tell. It looks really nice. That hair Shiny. Is, yeah, it's no, it's bottom tier. Kyocha's is way nice. That is that looks like an absurdly heavy headset. I'm just gonna say <laughs> that. He, he's either really small or that headset just is like he looks like he's gonna go into an airplane and pilot it. More of a helicopter hair headset, in my opinion. Oh, helicopter, yeah. Yeah, it's that way louder. Sense. I mean, that thing is ready to just block out siege yeah. tank fire from point-blank range from your ears. This is this is hair. Now, this... Is that hair, he or is that... He's got, he's got East, the E-Star logo. He's got that... Uh, Dude, that's a Hawaiian sunset. ...into the side of his hair. It's Turn beautiful. It the other way, damn it. No, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, well... He's going to turn eventually, Zoya. You have to see the logo, man. It looks dope. Looks like we're getting ready to get into those uh, so, draft. Uh, we, got, we got Sky Temple coming up. And um, what do you think the likelihood of, of seeing early picks on Global Presence Heroes? I mean, with with the power of Falstad always in the meta. We didn't see Falstad picked or banned in the last game. Uh, Dahaka, very powerful at finding people out of position and having that soak. Uh, where do you think they'll land in terms of the drafting phase? Um, so Dahaka has really not seen too much play, at least over here in Gold League. I, believe, uh, I thought Zelti so, had a few games on him. He, he's played it a bit. I'm, I mean, it meant more in comparison to NA and EU. Oh, I see Dahaka a lot. Um, MVP Black's always been a team that's kind of not played Falstad. Um, we see Kyocha on him every once in a while. I'd say like half their games, but comparison to the world. Um, you know, globals are super prioritized. Where MVP Black's playstyle is more death volley. They're always moving together as three or four, um, just cut throughout the entirety of the game. And like, and of course, they're always those five. Um, so they, you, you very rarely see them. You know, want those uh, global picks because of that. Hmm, that's true. Well, they've got their own little style, and they just kind of steamroll over their opponents, just always moving together. Zoya as a team manager. How envious of you are you of when you see the the manager walking behind the backs, helping them with the draft, getting ready? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no passion. It's always like, man, I want to cast video games, not walk behind. Yeah, my I, team. Want, I want. I want to talk about the game. Don't be like standing behind players. What? Yeah, that's true. I feel you. He feels me. I like East Star's hoodies. They look warm. They do. I remember, I remember when the last time I cast Gold League, like the last previous season, I don't know what was happening with K1 Pro, but he kept like putting on his sweater and then putting it off and then putting it off. So like maybe the booze are like weirdly temperature. Like you see here that like all these guys have hoodies on and then empty blacks. Like, you know what? We're better players because we're not afraid of, you know, the cold. I'm curious we if K1 case. Pro was, uh, was sick. If, if he was constantly, I mean, you, when you when you go to a different country, a lot of times people just get sick. Like, I don't think just, he was sick. I don't remember him telling me that. Yeah, but like you know, that's if I, if I'm hot, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, I'm usually ill. But that's just my life experience, man. I don't know. Man, will this draft start today? No, no, man, we don't get time. This draft is brought oh, to you. Oh, show, the, show, the, show the, hair. the thing. Turn, turn to your right. You, you can barely it's, it's see faded, like it. Man. His hair's to, grown he's back. He's getting faded because he's growing his hair out more. You need to. You need to fix that shit, man. Tao and chat saying K1 wasn't sick. Well, he just couldn't find the perfect temperature between hot and cold, Jake. Gosh. I see. All right. Thanks. Got the draft finally, guys. He <laughs> started with the first pick, first band. They're down 0-1. Oh, this is the best of three, guys. This is still the group stages. So I know people will be expecting like a best of five or best of seven. This is still, uh, you know, the early stages. Yeah, it's the, the stages. We're getting close to the end of the group stages. This is the last day for this group. 
Yeah. Uh, now, both of these teams are indeed guaranteed to advance on forward, but uh, this is going to secure that first place position, whoever wins this matchup. Both teams sitting at 4-0. Thrall will be banned out early uh, in this draft. Could this mean Sony first pick? Potentially. I mean, I would not let Rich get Sonya ever again. Yeah. I mean, Illidan didn't work for them. They banned Thrall. And uh, Falstead, Global Presence being removed on the side of MVP Black. Okay. No Smart surprise there for Sky Temple. See what the first pick is going to be here. Is it going to be that Sonya that you alluded to? Or will it be the Illidan again? Like you said, uh, I don't know if this was NA or EAU, we'd probably be seeing a Kale Foss pick up here if these were the bands. But uh, not the case. Not the case in uh, the Asian scene right now. The dude and it will be the Illidan again. again. Okay, so Zalti is still feeling confident on that hero. Um, last time, I believe the response was Kassadar with Sonya. We'll see if MVP Lock wants to do that again. I mean, it was a terrifying duo. I mean, do we even need to talk about that 3v5? No, no, please, never again. Actually, yes, we do. <laughs> but no, it was, it was crazy. I mean, it's the, the, the same that Tassadar provides across the board, just quickly throwing shields at every five seconds. And then Sonya is just a monster at uh, staying alive and dishing out damage. There she is. Uh, is it Tass as well? Yeah, all right. If it ain't fixed, don't broke it. If it ain't fixed, don't broke it. That's not the phrase. That's it's a trickster quote. That's a trickster quote. Yeah, he of said course. he said it at BlizzCon, like the first BlizzCon for heroes. He in, during his cast. If and it I, ain't fixed, don't broke. <laughs> I will never not say it. Man. That is a Tim thing to say. That's for, that is that is for sure. You start the next two picks. Last time they went etc Uther here. Which I mean, I think was fine. He starts draft. The only thing I had a problem with it was the Jaina. When it came to their composition, I mean, there's also the, you know, talking about drafting around your opponents. So we're going to be seeing, okay, so they're going to change it up. I like this. Rhaegar Silv. Yeah, Rhaegar, I, I like that adjustment. Um, Silv gives them that, that pressure that they want. They obviously really like Sylvanas, and she does hit pretty hard nowadays. Uh, so this is definitely a different order. So Li Ming will be banned out here. They're, they're, they're looking at, they're respecting her. Um, I would actually like to see a Kael'thas ban at this point. Kael'thas is... It wasn't necessarily a problem for E-Star in Game 1, but it doesn't mean that it won't be a problem here. There he is. Bend out. MVP Black with their next two picks. I believe last time we saw them run Toronda. Yeah, they could just grab Mar other Miranda here. here. Uh, but I, I don't think they need to get their second warrior uh, anytime soon. Toronda makes sense, uh, because Toronda would very likely be picked by E-Star if left there. She could go the full owl build um, and she she lends herself nicely to Illidan for sure with Starfall. Greymane. Greymane. That is surprising. Hmm. Greymane ETC. So they do pass up the Toronto pickup. We'll see if E-Star does want to capitalize on that. They're also saying that they, they prefer ETC over Muradin in this situation. Um... This is such a scary draft decision for E Star. They can try and deny the Toronto, which they don't really have great setup for it. I guess they can go murder in Toronto, but the follow up outside of that is all right. But if you go murder in Toronto, then you give you force MVP Black to play Karazim, which uh, is scary. <laughs> Mary Day is Karazim, yeah. yeah it's silly. It could definitely still be Uther on the side of MVP Black, uh, but again, this is going to be responsive as to whatever Easter locks their final pick in. In terms of ranged assassins, uh, Vala maybe? Oh, Abathur! So they want the global. They're the, they're the only ones that are going to have a global most likely. And obviously, Abathur, Illidan, Rhaegar, that's, that's a trio of, of... But it's kind of all into Zhao Ti, and it is the Uther final pick. This will probably Divine Storm. It could be, yeah. I mean, Greymane is still a pretty squishy target. That's they true. don't have too much burst, though. I mean, if if Murden goes Thunderstrike at 13, then they'll have some burst. But with Sylv as their main damage and Illidan, that's not too much burst. So they might not actually need a Divine Shield if they're going double support with Uther. Um, so you're right. They could potentially go Divine Storm. Yeah, but, with uh, Illidan Abathur is a comp we haven't seen. We don't see it too often. Um, if there's a map to do it. It's here. 
Uh, Sky yeah. Temple is such a large map, especially when you're looking at between top and mid. Uh, that's a huge amount of space, and that's really what Illidan needs to be able to just dance around his opponents. So, obviously, having Abathur for the Soak as well, there's a chance that he goes Mule at 7. I find it unlikely, uh, but if there's a map to pick Mule, it's Sky Temple. Well, we shall see, Jake. Will this be uh, a comeback here for E-Star? Will it be 2 for MV Black? Like you said, a lot of pride on the line for these guys. And they're not holding out. That's the thing that uh, Orho was telling me about when he went to uh, Korea is that the, the you know you, you mentioned it on Town Hall, the potential of them hiding strats, but uh, what Urho was saying was whenever they were scrimming, uh, the, the Chinese teams, the Korean teams, um, they, don't, they don't hide drafts. Whatever they were practicing in scrims, they ran in tournaments. Uh, okay. Oh, Absurd. yeah. <laughs> I'm rocking out, man. The wiggles are intense in the chair. Sky Temple game two is currently up 1-0 for MVP Black. A-Star, they want to defend their region. They want to end the winning spree that MVP Black has been on for weeks and weeks at this point. But I don't know if they can do it, Zoya. Zhao T is going to have to play like a god to turn this around. I didn't hear half of what you said, bro. That's good, I'm man. I'm sorry. We were rocking that out. Music. <laughs> that music is intense. Guys, we're loading into the game. This is match point for MVP Black. And we'll see here if they can close out here on the left-hand side of the map. In the blue trunks, it's going to be E-Star down 0-1. Tiger on Rhaegar. Murden played by NCC. Zalti on Ilden. Zingsi on Sylvanas. And Toomey playing Abathur. All right. We have four heroes on the other side, Jake. We're going to find out, man. On the red side, that is MVP Black. is going to be Sake on the gray main. Kyocha going to be playing Tassadar Rich on his Sonya. Meriday going to be on Uther. And then <laughs> they have that backwards. That's, that said Meriday on ETC. Yeah, that tilted yeah. me too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I believe that would be Sion playing ETC. That's not Nova. Nova is the caster. Ah. Uh, He's the one on the right. I think that's casting today. I see. You said the one on the right was The Miss one on the left is Miss Joy. The one on the left is Miss Joy. You're tilting me, man. I'm All right. sorry. Uh, East Star versus MVP Black coming on in, immediately using that trait, the Black Arrow of Sylvanas, to try to get some damage done, but the response from MVP Black and Bot is imminent. Only about 10% of that uh, tower's damage is, is dealt, and MVP Black has uh, pushed them away. Yeah, I mean, it's... Pretty expected to uh, see, you know, even a team without Savannah's to them, you know, one man on the lane here, and MB Black just smartly waiting in mid for them to show up. Rotates down immediately, deny any serious damage. So uh, not too much gain from uh, that from E-Star there. Um, it will be uh, Rich versus Zalti here on the top, and uh, Rich is going to uh, be doing the best he can to deal with this tri-lane up here as Zingsi and Tiger are joining Zalti. All right, Abathur lone in bottom as well, so this is what's enabling them to get so aggressive here in the top. Yes, Sylv has the trait, but Abathur so can bot versus Greymane. Now, Greymane will push that lane out slowly but surely because Abathur just doesn't have the same kind of impact. And it seems like that MVP is doing a great job defending top. Sure, a little bit of light damage taken. This could mean that we're going to see a preference for Eastar to try to control the top temple for the first temple phase. But Zhao has got to be careful. He's going deep with that Abathur hat onto Kyocha and does have a lot of damage output. We're turning around onto Rich here. He's in a lot of trouble there. Do, do, can they keep him up? No, that's going to be first blood. Sign gets the power slide out of there. Zalti diving wow. deep. They get another kill. Two kills for nothing there in favor of E-Star. Uh, I mean, we, we talked about last game how you have to respect the Murden Taronda. This game, you got to respect the Abathur Illidan, man. It, even, it is monstrous. The, the additional damage provided from the Feral Lunge 2 of Rhaegar, like having Rhaegar as your support, not only is he a great dive buddy, but he does have a, a good bit of damage output as well. So it's working very well for them. Already a full level lead for E-Star. We're only two minutes into this game. So this is a phenomenal start, far different from game number one for them. Taking a look at the uh, build here for Abathur, we're going to be seeing Pressurized Glance at level 1, and then, of course, the attack speed, uh, attack speed buff with Adrenal uh, Overlord load at level 4. Um, and uh, pretty standard to uh, Abathur build when you are you know have a target that you're going to be sitting on for the majority of the game, like an Illidan. Yeah. Um, you know, not seeing the globe. We have a lot of CC going down onto uh, Murden. He gets Dwarf Toss out of there. Haunting Ooh. Wave forward. Will the Wave of Light connect? No. NCC just barely going to live out of there. Nice that job. That was beautiful. That was really well done by NCC. Um, just 
barely getting that Stormbolt in time, realizing Greyman was going to be launching himself forward to get those final hits in, and that would have been a dead uh, bird in, in that situation. Illidan did get all the sh all the shots from top, so he has rotated Zyauti being pressured on, but does back away with evasion. And again, Tassadar had to leave bottom, so this is another lane where Abathur is getting a huge soak benefit for this team. Well, let's see here uh, what damage that uh, MVP Black can you know start to control as they are you know losing on multiple fronts or down a full level already. Um, you know, they haven't been able to secure any kills. We do see that Zing C is taking these uh, giants down here in the bottom left, and then Sake, Merida, and Kyocha are going to be taking the uh, brute giants in the bottom right. And potential invade here coming out from ETC as he is aggressively scouting. Will they be willing to contest it? No, just a little bit too late to that. Huge rotation from Eastar going down. Stormbolt does connect, and that's Tassadar. Kyocha does have that dimensional shift ready to go. Not even going to cast it yet. Looking to turn things around. It's a 4v3 in bot. Illidan sitting in mid, and Abathur soaking for Sonia in top. But again, this is another situation where experience could be lost on the side of MVP Black. And level 7 has already been locked in here from Eastar. Yeah, no surprise on these talent choices so far. We're going to be seeing cleanse on Rhaegar. Um, you know, there's only... a, a Two heroes will have a real CC, ETC and uh, Uther, but, uh, you know, if, uh, let's say, Murder gets caught in the mosh pit, you know, you can cleanse him to help the Stormbolt interrupt that. So, um, you know, no surprise there, even though, uh, you know, it's not the uh, burst type CC like you see from a Toronto or a Kael'thas cleanse. Still highly viable. And we're going to be seeing uh, Murder go for battle momentum as well. Uh, yeah. just so he has the extra cooldown reduction. So we don't even necessarily always see full-on uh, chain lightning builds, though, and this is really just definitely tuned towards the Illid and Muradin in the front line. Yeah. Um, so I do like that call a lot from our regular player, and I don't know if you mentioned it, but there is no mule. So, Abathur, we mentioned that that was a potential here for Sky Temple. Not going to be the case today. Zyauti, considering diving in, he will be greeted, if he does, by a flurry of stuns. Of course, Mary Day is waiting with that. They do back away, and this is now an overextension here for uh, Eastar. Yeah, it's a five versus five here, uh, as the Abathur hat was present. So that nice rotations there from both teams. I mean, all of E-Star was heading in, knowing that they could potentially turn into a fight. And then all of MVP Black immediately rotated in as well. I mean, that was just a beautiful communication on both sides. We do yeah. finally have the Shrine spawning. Abathur sitting in the top lane, Jake. He's helping push with those bruisers up there. Um, you know, just getting even more value there. And Zalti getting the first few shots, but Rich going to force him off. Now, I like this call for Eastern to just kind of back up. They know they're, they're so close to having level 10. Um, they, they have more than a level lead, and they don't want to throw that away. The way that you throw your lead away is you fight over a, a temple that's not critical for you, right? They can push with Sylph. They're doing exactly that, but Sylph needs to back up. Three-man rotation coming up from MVP, and it is successfully now they're rotating down to try to control that temple. Great presence from both teams right now uh, playing this perfectly, but the Abathur Soak is going to add up if he does actually move himself into the lane. <laughs> Yeah, Toomey's been doing a monstrous job of maintaining Soak across multiple lanes. We see him uh, uh, in really weird positions, too. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't think I've ever seen Abathur sitting quite there, but uh, he, he's consistently symbioting the waves, helping get that experience. And now it's basically a two-level lead here for Eastar as they do get their heroics. going to be Ultimate Evolution, Wailing Arrow, Metamorphosis, Avatar, and Ancestral Healing. All the standards here. I'm um, curious as to who will be seeing the Ultimate Evolution on. I'm assuming it's going to be either Illidan or Murden. Yeah, I mean, the Illidan is at least annoying to deal with. And you got to remember, like, Illidan has a phenomenal base kit. And the, the stats that you get as a benefit from the meta yeah. make, makes that Illidan pretty scary. But, like, who's the backline target you're diving onto with double Illidan? Uh, I'm not too sure. There's there's not really a... I mean, just Greymane's the squishy one. But we'll, we'll see how it works out. I mean, Muradin can definitely be very powerful as well. Illidan's surprisingly oh good my. versus Illidan, or, or excuse me, Illidan is surprisingly good versus Tassar. I said wrong heroes completely there. Um, you know, it's uh, Tassar just has difficulty dealing with Illidan once he's on top of him. There's no one to peel off of him. Yeah, he can live a long time, but there's no way to actually stop Illidan from what he's doing. Yeah. And uh, Eastar just going to sneak in a boss here. I mean, MVP Black probably aware that was being taken, knowing that they couldn't do anything with it. But guys, they have a Sylvanas with this double Merc push here. This is this could be serious damage. This is huge. Um. So level 10 just about locked in for MVP Black. That's why we didn't see any contesting happening. And they're not even going to push. They're going to say, hey, look, you, you, have to, you have to respond to bottom lane. You don't have an option. We're going to push, else, push elsewhere. They take out this middle fort. Guess what? All three forts will be down. Well, Eastar got to be feeling pretty good here. MVP Black going to be working on that boss almost immediately. Eastar going to rotate up, Jake. Two level lead here for Eastar. And, uh, That's huge, you know, man. things are looking pretty good right now. As they're taking the third and final fort, Jake. You know, uh, I believe people in Twitch chat just said this is a 41 game winning streak right now. Oh my, that's insane! It's looking, it's looking like it's on the. Uh, 
well, the it's, verge of that ending. It's far from over at this point, but we'll see if MVP Black can, can turn things around. But yeah, two level lead is sizable right now on the side of E-Star. They're actually controlling every single mercenary camp on the map except for the top right bruiser camp that MVP Black does have in the next temple phase is here. 13 is imminent, which means that once E-Star locks that in, they can look to force a fight. Are they? Okay, I thought they might push bot. I was like, that seems aggressive. Well, they do see that the two shrines spawn mid and bottom. We'll see which one Easter oh, wants Silv, to connect. Silv they catch needs help. Merry Day in the rotation there, already on top of them, but they do end up missing the Storm Bolt. NCC going to have to back out. They're getting hit pretty hard already by Sonya and Tass that are already at half HP, but they're going to go on to uh, Greymane over here. Saki being chased by Zalti. Avatar clone going on to him as well. And they're trying to kite back. Now, Silv did get the Ancestral Heal. She was getting burned down by Greyman in the bottom right, and they barely saved her. Toomey did have to pop the Ultimate Evolution to be a distraction and help get her out as well. So that is two big heroic spent, Wailing Arrow and Ancestral Heal, and, and it's really just go for the throat that was spent on the side of Greymane. Yeah, but they're cloned down as well. I'm not getting any value out of oh, that. Yeah. So now, MVP Black is just forcing the fight here. They're chasing Eastar from point to point. Yeah. Which is going to try and stall out the shots, but during all of this stalling, during all this chasing, E Star's getting further and further ahead in experience because of this Abathur. Yeah, and Abathur actually was on ZLT here. Diving in, that should be a dead Kyocha. He's just able to stick to the target so well. Even with that dimensional shift, Kyocha will yeah. go down. Huge mosh pit, though, on the two targets, but Meriden able to back on out, looking for that Storm Bolt to keep ZLT alive. Metamorphosis is cast, oh and that God. will be a dead Merry Day. They're going for the chase even harder. Sake is very low as well as Rich. A four for another exchange. And even with Sign being up, they have 13 seconds on uh, the Tassar. It's up. Okay, so they're going to go for points. Okay, so I thought they might have went and pressured a while. They're going to go for the safe option here. They did have the Sylvanas, but they're not going to go for the pusher. But that's what I'm talking about, Jake. Illidan, what does Tassar do when he has an Illidan on him in a 1v1 situation? Yeah, he can live for a long time with his phase shift as well as his shields. But if Illidan and Tassar are in a 1v1 situation... Zalti is going to win that every single time. And now, a oh, three level lead. This is a complete reverse of last game. Jake Eastar, yeah. five kills, six kills, six kills to zero you know, over MVP Black. I was being critical about Zalti's Illidan. And in a composition that doesn't have the same kind of control, there's there's no Tyrande, no Miranda with, with Kael'thas. His, his Illidan is just running circles around MVP Black right now. And the damage is just starting to become a little bit too much, right? Two forts still standing on the side of Eastar, while the, the keep fortifications are now being pressured by MVP Black and level 16, a three level lead and a talent tier advantage. That is massive. Yeah, this is this is this is huge for E Star. Um, but MVP Black's not out of this. They still have all three of their keeps. They're at a huge deficit right now. Um, and it's gonna be a struggle for them to, you know, come back and maintain uh their position oh, in this game. I but love oh this. my god. They, okay, so they're gonna have to get the clone. There it is, Tumi clones, and the, they're diving on in. Now the camp is picked up successfully, but the fight is being forced by E Star. Can they get the kill they're so desperate for a beautiful force while there? Rich taking a decent amount of damage, but does end up kiting back. Zalti going did get stunned out. Does he have meta up? He does end up metaing here. Don't know if they wanted him to do that. Wailing Arrow comes out. Divine Shield goes down onto Rich, and that's Ancestral Healing as well. Not the best engage for E-Star. They tried to force something really close to the keep of MVP Black. It was 16 versus 13, but they were just too close to their defensives to be able to uh, get any more value out of that. So uh, E-Star just going to back away using almost every single heroic in their arsenal. Yeah, they spent a ton. It's That's, that's a big moment of weakness for them they do have the three level advantage so it's not like they're that squishy but uh i do want to point out it's six to nothing in terms of kills in this game east star is not lost a single hero yet they've played very passively there's situations where uh Sylv was low and illidan was low but every every single time the the heals are there in time or uh, the abathur clone has also been a big key part of that Every time I look at the minimap, Toomey's in a different spot. I mean, he's the most mobile avatar I've seen. He's just constantly moving around the map. Uh, he's not even doing it in lanes. He's just like pressure. He's just like shifting around to put his locust down different lanes just to help get each individual lane shoved out. Kyocha taking a lot of damage already just from NCC and Zingsi with the avatar hat there. Now, yeah, NCC wants to like just keep the pressure on. He's starting to poke. 15 seconds till meta is up. 30 on Ancestral. Uh, so those are kind of the two big heroics to look out for. Nice cleanse very early there on NCC. Taking a lot of damage. So popping the Avatar with the hat. Doing so much damage in the front. Sign getting the half HP. Rich getting low as well. They do not have Divine Shield for seven seconds, and, and that's going to be the death of Rich. They're going for the chase here. Zingsi looking for the pressure. Murden goes for the Dwarf Toss. Does not end up connecting the Storm Bolt there. They're not going to be able to get any more kills, but that's 20 second, uh, 24 seconds without uh, the Sonya there, and uh, they're going to be able to control both of these shrines. This is going to start doing some serious keep damage, Jake. This could be two keeps at this point. They've done enough damage. Abathur has the bottom lane completely pushed out. NCCC oh, is even boss. going. What? Yeah, he's, They're going to the boss, realizing 
controlling how much presence they have. They're controlling both of these shrines. So the chance of MVP checking this the boss right creepy. now? There's no way they can get both shrines and the boss, Jake. I don't know. Sign has no idea. He does walk right by the area. The mine scouted him, but he didn't scout it. The boss is going to be picked up. The what? moment they see Rhaegar alone, they're going to be like, oh, no, we messed up. This is awful for MVP Black. How do you let someone get away with that much greed, Jake? Both shrines and a boss, they do force them off of mid-boss. The Tiger got more than half of the shots there, though. What? E-Star. <laughs> I can't believe they got away with that, man. And both keeps in top Sake. and they're down now, Jake. Bottom is already half HP from the after pressure and the pressure from before and their last remaining shots. This is a triple keep scenario. Seven kills to zero. MVP Black is about to lose for the first time in 41 games, Jake. Yeah, we've got that top fort still standing on the side of E-Star. They are dominating game number two. And the final keep is going to go down. And I don't think E-Star should press the issue here. They, they know they have a four level level lead. They'll walk in with the boss. They'll keep it alive as long as they can. If they find a mistake at the MVP, they'll end it there. But they're gonna play passively until they see Estar overextend and Illidan going in. But the shrink rate has been cast. Oh, well, they're trying to hold this off right now. Sign at about half HP. Gets the power slide out of there. Core is at 100%. Just about to start losing shields. I wonder if they're gonna commit to this. Alti uh, trying to get some damage on the Sake. Uh, but their hat still sitting on uh, Illidan. Not yeah. going for the clone just yet. NCC has to leap over the wall. Can they get a full disengage here? They're gonna be able to get out, Jake. Yeah, once level 16 was hit and the boss fell, it just becomes a really unnecessary risk. And 16 was so close there, so MVP will be able to defend for now, but the core is down to 83%. Holding one temple in full will end the game. They're trying to make something happen here. They got about a quarter level while E-Star does not have their Storm Tier talents, and that's what they're trying to do, Jake. They're trying to make something happen, whether it's forcing a fight out of keep or just trying to get a pick. They know that this is their last opportunity, but Toomey is a soaking machine. His team is getting closer and closer to 20. Abathur might get caught down here in the bottom. Nah, no, he's already he's out of there, man. He is a slippery little slug. Well, level 20 is about to be locked in for E-Star. They're going to have a huge Storm Tier adv advantage for a long time. And we're seeing Hive Mind picked up from Abathur. This is going to really amplify his presence in the front line of that when the Illidan and Rhaegar Muradin are diving in and doing yeah. what they do best. Well, it's going to be a single shrine here, Jake, in the top. And like you said, if they control all the shots, that will be game for MVP Black. They're down they're 20 to 17. Bush. Oh, they're going to find Rich. They're diving in. The Stormbolt locks him down and Rich is going to try to get out with the Ancient Spear but the, it's just too much pressure. Divine Shield has to be cast. Meta is in for Xiao Ti, backing away, diving back onto Sake, who is very low. And with the Avatar, oh, the Wailing silence. connecting on sign, that will be a dead ETC. Murdered still going for the chaser, haunting way forward from Zingsi. Everyone on the end of MVP Black is so low, but we got catapults from three lanes coming in. Sake dives deep, tries to get the kill, goes for the throw, but not going to be able to get Zingsi here. Nice heal from Tiger with the ancestral healing. Sake kiting back as well as he can, but that is three members dead on the end of MVP Black. Core is at 60%, and the win streak is over, Jake. 41 and 1. E Star finally dethrones MVP Black. Absolutely incredible. You can see the relief on their face. Even if they don't win this series, this is a victory no matter how you look at it. They have defeated the most dominant run we've seen in Heroes of the Storm since the game has launched. Not a single team has been able to go undefeated for that long in like, any other esport that I can think of. Like, yeah, they, that, that's insane. Absolutely spectacular play by E-Star. Yeah, that was really well done. I mean, uh, for those of you that watch Super League, um, you gotta say that uh, I think most people would agree. MVP Black did look a little bit shaky there. They ended up winning their set, but it wasn't, you know, the MVP, the dominating MVP Black that we know. And it just goes to show you how important draft is in this game. We talked about the draft for game number one in E-Star. It was abysmal, and they got bodied because of it. And they go into game number two with a good draft for them, uh, and it was a completely different game. It just shows you how important it is to study your opponents, how they draft, and find drafts that work for you on those maps because it can be the difference between getting three-level leaded and then three-level leading the best team in the world. Wow. Xiao Ti, yeah, they're, they're showing him off here. He's a, a MVP key of element of that game. I mean, yeah, sure, he was the MVP. The draft was very much built around him, for sure, with the Rhaegar dive buddy. I mean, 
You talk about healers and the impact that they have on games. We often talk about Taronda with Hunter's Mark and just her lockdown with Miranda. But I would say that, that Rhaegar Illidan is just as, as powerful because of how effective Rhaegar is at diving in. And Feral Lunge sh secured so many kills in that game yeah. that gave them that advantage. They had level one advantage at the two minute marker. And that is that is huge. Yeah. I mean you can't you can't not respect the Illidan. That was as god comp as Illidan gets. I mean, you can't get a better you can't get a better Illidan comp than that. I mean, maybe having Tastar for that for uh, no, no, I think that that comp's like almost as good as it gets. You, you can't let Illidan get Abathur murdered in Rhaegar like that. That's just crazy. You got to you got to start respecting the Abathur. You got to start either banning him out or banning those picks that go well with him cuz that was you, you can't let E-Star get that draft. You, could, you should never let any team get that draft they just had on Sky Temple. I mean, Zuna just tweeted, so when you have the Illidan Gon comp and they don't have KT, you can't lose. <laughs> like, he's right. I mean, that comp was was pretty pretty flawless, and uh, Zhao T made the place happen. Yeah. Well, we have a tied set. Yeah, this is game three. We don't actually Chinese see a, casters a... look happy for once. <laughs> they usually are uh, very upset when they are casting MVP black games, but they're like, oh, they're they finally got their teams. win. <laughs> finally got their win. Yeah, the guy on the left, I think that's Miss Joy. Guy on the right is Nova. I don't know her. I don't remember her. Gilly knows all of her names for some reason because she knows the names of every silly thing in the hero scene. Yeah, I, I'll learn them someday, man. He's all yeah. I'm yeah. gonna abandon you and refill my coffee. I'll be our man. Nice. I'm gonna talk to the chat. Sup, chat? How you guys doing? Yesterday, had some chilies. Got my the chicken, the golden chicken crispers. It was delicious. That was actually the only thing I ate yesterday was the chilies. No, that's not. Tr yep. No, yeah. Yesterday was the only thing I ate was chilies. It was pretty good. I like chilies. JPL subs in the chat. I gotta say, JPL is the most adorable looking European player. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Snitch, he's baby faced and cute. No. No, 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 no. The moment Snitch start, starts talking, you like forget what he looks like. JPL is the most adorable European player. I'm tired of people saying it's Snitch. Gotta get on the JPL hype train, guys. Faux show. Sure. I'm just teasing Snitch, by the way. I love that guy. Hope I get to see him again soon. Hanging out with him and Baker at uh, BlizzCon was probably one of my favorite of like times in all of Heroes. Those guys are really cool. You're my favorite. Shut up, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Look, look at my cup, Zoya. What do you think about Okay, it? so the question wasn't who's the hottest European player. It's who's the most adorable. All right, look at JPL, man. That face, how do you not fall in love with the adorability of that face? We're talking about the hottest European did, player. Did you say JPL's how do you not say... cuter than Snitch? Yes, that's the argument I was just having. Snitch starts talking, he loses his cuteness. No. JPL is just no. adorable as hell. No, Snitch is... If we're talking about the hottest European player, it's BKB. Yeah, man. Eternal's Deeps, but BKB, man, that guy is just the perfect human form. Uh, he just needs to work on his posture, because I swear every time I see him sitting in a chair, he's like at a 90, like, like his back is like about to like break. It's like a, almost looks, completely flat. He looks like a, a half pipe or something. I don't know. The guy just like... Yeah, it's weird. Like it looks like, you know, I could, you know, take a wheelchair and like ride up his body as a ramp. Please? When he sits, I would love when he to watch chair. this. <laughs> I just picture BKB looking fully content as you wheelchair your way up him. <laughs> How's your coffee, man? Oh, it tastes wondrous, man. This is this is what coffee's for. Waking up. 
I picked I picked the the day that all of Gilly's mods are Mia. I picked the <laughs> the wrong day to troll the troll the stream. <laughs> There's a lot of Kappa prides, and that's a lot of what faces. Ah, uh, man. Usually when I wake up at the wee hours of the morning, it means I'm going on vacation or something. My brain is mad at me. It's like we're supposed to be driving into the sunrise of beautiful mountains in New England. And it's not what's happening. But this is so much better. We get, yeah, to, we well, get to cast the ultimate the matchup. Oh, this is the sunrise, man. How about being sheltered in your room with the lights off? That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> So this is this is huge. Now we I didn't miss the map pick when I was grabbing coffee, did I? Uh, I don't know. I was talking with chat, man. Okay. Um, we could. Have. I don't think so, though. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect it. Um, spoilers. I'm pretty sure that Hearthstone Dwarf isn't in in Heroes. That's tilting me. Dude, okay. That's, that's StarCraft hate, 2 Nova to, art. You shouldn't have brought that up, but I got to say, this Hearthstone expansion is by far the most fun this game has ever been. It's it's a new game. I am having, and, and it, it's a blast, dude, dude. I've never had this much. I've always enjoyed Hearthstone, but. Spoilers, like, I might make a Hearthstone podcast. It, it's too fun. I'm having so much fun with it, man. You need to chill, dude. No, I'm going to just make a podcast for Stardew Valley. I'm going to make a podcast for... Okay, I'm on that show. <laughs> no, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, Zoya, are you ready? Are you ready for a story? Yeah, I'm ready so for you, a story. You know I just bought land, right? I yeah. bought a house. You know that this house is my fiance's grandfather's land, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's been overgrown? Yeah. And there's tons of rocks and, and branches and stuff. Yeah, you told to me this story like eight times, and it makes me jealous every time. Did I tell you? Did I tell you that we we, we started cutting stuff? we started cutting down trees? And cutting we, out trees? I'm AFK. And and we legit we legit we legit got one cedar, so we got like hardly any hardwood, but we do have some hardwood, and we're using it to make furniture. Her father's a woodworker, and we're making furniture out of the hardwood we got off our our farm. <laughs> I'm jealous, dude. Real life Stardew Valley, boys. I want a real life Stardew Valley. No, I don't. I want to sit in my room and keep playing video games. I changed my mind. Would we get to the, the draft? No. Nah, what, it's... like, do they got to let MVP Black take a few minutes to collect themselves because they're so tilted? They just got bodied harder than any team I've ever seen get bodied before. Hello? Don't let some team draft Abathur Illidan, guys. Okay, that's not true. I've seen teams get bodied ten times harder than that. But oh, oh, we're moving to a different screen. Nice. Oh, snap. Look at that splash logo. Bright lights. And we're going to Tomb. Now this was gonna. This is going to be a first pick for MVP Black. They realized that um, you know just letting that Illidan setup happen the way it did uh, worked against them. The map is going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. We'll see how MVP Black wants to prioritize the start of the draft. Now, if you guys are just tuning in and you, you missed game number two, um, it wasn't close. E-Star face rolled MVP Black. Oh, yeah. I mean... Any team, like you could give that draft to like, like Bayway Star, and they'll have like successors and be black with it. That draft is just way too good. But guys, here we go. Game number three. Winner of this set makes it out of the group. Loser still makes it out of the group, but with a lower seed. I built that up very weird. I apologize. It's early. Tasks are going to be the band here from MP Black. Not willing to uh, give East Star the option to pick it up. Yeah, I mean you can't blame them. Uh, they've had huge success with the Tassadar themselves. Tassadar is amazing on this map. He gives you so much vision. Like it's it's just such a small map that Oracle gets crazy value, especially when it comes to the goaltending. There's there's such a huge emphasis on just denying turnitin of gems. And is he the best hero in the game at it? Probably. Yeah, he's pretty good. Great stalls, great visions. Zul going to be the ban here, no surprise. We usually see Zul bans on this map, Infernal Shrines, and um, 
sometimes Blackheart's Bay. I mean, you see them on all maps clearly, but this is the maps of these two, this one and and for all, it's like 100% ban rate. Giving a team as a first pick is just too scary. MVB Black thinking real hard on what they want for their first pick. No, I actually, okay. They're going straight for Illidan. What I was going to say is there's definitely going to be a Sylvanas in this game for sure. We've already seen Eastar play a lot of Sylvanas, and this is, you know, just as powerful as any other map, if not more powerful for her with the lockdown presence of just getting the additional value out of the Web Weavers. Uh, Eastar, knowing that. Illidan is picked up and Zul is not an option. Do they want to lock in that Sonya, that Thrall very early and keep the same theme of the series? Surprisingly enough, Thrall's not really uh, contended too much here in uh, Gold League. He got um, banned in that last game, but it's definitely a lot different than NA. Yes, definitely a lot different than NA. But this is one of his best maps. Having a good solo laner is important on Tomb of Spider Queen. You do leave them in the bottom lane. It's going to be ETC, though. As they uh, did not end up getting ETC in game number two. Definitely seems like a comfort pick for them. As for their damage dealer, what will we see as the follow-up? It's going to be Kael'thas. There we go. We're finally starting to see that Kael'thas picked up early here. And like you said, you alluded to the Zuna tweet. We have the God comp with Illidan, and they don't have Kael'thas. Yeah. It's it's actually it's it's a combination of that for sure. Like, he, he's just... KT is, is really good, but like his, his lane clear is amazing, right? You want to have a strong link clear here. Um... And ETC, also, you know, a safe response to dealing with Illidans as well. Yeah. Does MVP, I mean, there's no TAS. Probably going to be a Rhaegar. They don't even need Rhaegar. If they don't If they don't feel the that they, they want that pairing, Nerida is going to be fine on Karazim I think they have to go or, or Uther. You think so? Yeah. Without the Tassadar, I don't think Karazim's enough to keep him alive. And if they don't pick up the Rhaegar now, um, then they risk E-Star banning it out. That's That's true. Right. They need Rhaegar, Rhaegar or Uther. Yeah. They had to pick one of them here, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, we do see Uther has been locked in, so it shouldn't be a Rhaegar ban. Um, on the side of Eastar, actually, we could even see MVP Black ban Rhaegar at this point. Me Leeming was picked up. Leeming's going to be amazing uh, for just... This is a huge map for Leeming in general. It's why I'm seeing her picked up so early. She can teleport over the walls. The walls are between each lane are so narrow on this map. And it, she has just great mobility. She's great at goaltending and... She can just just spam those those orbs and do huge damage. Should be an orb build, I would imagine. Yeah, um, I would imagine as well. I don't know if that's picked up in the other regions. I know it's pretty favored in NA and EU. It's harder to play though than the normal leaming builds. As uh, it's true, it's more high risk, high reward. Don't very early yeah. if you don't know how to conserve your meta. So that's going to be the Murden and the uh, Sonya bands coming out. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I'm curious if we'll see Zalti Zeratul, a Tassadar band out with Sonya band out. Um, we, we know we do tend to see him on melee assassins, so it's between that and Thrall. It's been a while since I've seen a Zeratul, but I would like to uh, let's just see that here. Yeah. Um, so if he star does want a frontline hero, it's going to have to be Thrall. Thrall is still a great pickup. He's, uh, I mean, flanking is a little bit harder on this map, but in this situation that Illidan dives too deep, you can summon the rest of the team, deny that Divine Shield from getting to him, and he's just going to be really good for those scenarios. So they go for Sylph for the huge push potential. Thrall is going to have the lane clear and the the, the frontline presence. Uh, I, I love this draft out of V-Star. Yeah, this is really great. I mean, they got a lot of CC with Sundering, Mosh Pit, Gravity Lapse, Feral Spirit, Power Slide. They have a lot of interrupt. Falso is going to be the last pick for MVP Black. Um... They've really only been they've, they've only ever only been the only team really to play Falstad in Korea. They don't do it a lot. I would say like what I mean, they do it about like maybe a half their games hmm. compared to NA and EU where we were seeing when when he was still had the four second gust, we saw him like every game in NAU where Korea kind of just ignored Falstad minus MVP Black. So they do have the experience on it. Um, Malfurion last pick that is. Now I like Malf late game, just because like. Ice block with Trank is is like a pretty fair response to a team like this. But you talk about Ice Block and then Mighty Gust. <laughs> it's just like, you know, then the mouth just gets completely secluded if he's blocked during that gust. So this is going to be tough. The mouth pick is, is definitely a challenge. I am confused. Just by the mouth, mouth pick? over Rhaegar is yeah. really surprising here. I mean, the, on this map in particular, the roots do have phenomenal zone control uh when it comes to just fighting over the the turning points in general it does close out you can just lock out a door right just say hey this door's closed you know 
try another door and or lock people in as well but he's not a safe hero and Illidan can dance all over him yeah it's really interesting draft from well that that mouth pick you ready for the gems um, I mean so with the nerf still leaming with Illidan he's more sustained than burst like it, like I could see where E Star is coming from, but you got Mal versus Falstad. Yeah, it's gonna be a challenge. I believe. I believe in E Star. I think they can do it. MVP Black, the world champs, the best team in the world, finally dropped a game, shown that they are in fact human, not some gods that have descended into our world. Yeah. I mean, I'm not fully against the uh, the mouth pick here. Um, it's just interesting to see that over the radar. We'll see if it plays out for them. It's definitely a risk, but here we go. Loud music. Yeah. All right. We made it. We made it to the other end of the music. E-Star on the blue side, MVP on the red. This is game number three on Tomb of the Spider Queen. The team that wins this game will get first place in their Group A of Gold League uh, for the summer season. And that's a big deal. That means you have you've got you, you don't play against first seed from the other team or from the other group, from Group B. There we go. E-Star, Tiger on Malfury, and NCC on Thrall. Zalti playing ETC. Zingsi playing Kel'Thas. That's our... Is that right? Yeah, uh, NCC's on Thrall. Wow. Not on the ETC. Cool. And on the blue side, MVP Black, we've got Sake playing as Li Ming. It's going to be Kyocha playing Falstead. Rich going to be on Illidan. Mary Day playing Uther. And Sion playing as Johanna. Sion? How do you say, man? Sign? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's cropped on my screen. <laughs> The Windows bar is cutting off the little bottom portion. <laughs> Whatever you say, Hey, man, man it's early. God. <laughs> well, we do see Kyocha immediately flying here. And, you know, Kyocha, when it comes to false dead performance, I've always feel he's very hit or miss on this hero. Um, sometimes his positioning is just awful. Sometimes he doesn't get the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't get the best guess, but uh, other game days he's you know completely on point. So it depends on how Kyocha is going to show up today when it comes to his false stab play. And uh, we do see that uh, MVP Black going to be contesting the middle S5 and uh, E-Star realizing that they don't even want to mess with this level 1 fight from MVP Black. They're going to go immediately to lanes. Now, one thing about this draft, and one of the reasons why we're seeing Joe is she's a piggy bank. And she's she's got the lane clear. Night takes pawn is, is critical for this. And it's it's partially due to the fact that they, they drafted Li Ming. Li Ming does not have good lane clear. She's got great yeah. damage. Um, but she's not like KT and Jaina where they can just burst down a lane. And Tiger's got to be careful. He doesn't want to take too much uh, of that, that orb damage flying in at him. Very rarely do we see a, uh, a lane set up like this, the 2-1-2 two -two split. Uh, because, you know, whatever lane, the uh, MBB Black composition, which is probably going to be remaining as 3-4, is going to get more value here. We see Kyocha immediately fall down and immediately backing out of there. You have to be careful. Uh, you know, the E-Star e has a lot of CC. Roots root, uh, between Thrall and Mouth. Uh, you got stuns between, you know, Gravity Lapse, Sundering, Mosh Pit, Power Slide. I mean, there's a lot of CC on the end of E-Star. So you have to be super mindful of your positioning against this team. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely going to be scary. Well, we've seen a good bit of push so far in favor of MVP Black. They've just managed to whittle down the fortifications a little bit in the mid lane in particular. So that's a, a small victory for them. We do see Sign has been collecting the majority of the gems. He is indeed that piggy bank. And huge damage on him. The roots perfectly placed, and that's an early kill. All those gems he was holding could be denied here, and Rich gets very low but does not end up going down. Is just barely going to end up surviving there. I mean, like we were just talking about the CC, Jake, and it was there. There was no, even for Joanna with Iron Skin down, there was no yeah. escape, and but she the, ended up falling there. That's 14 gems dropped too. Like, that's that's actually a, a huge deal. This is going to give E Star a nice uh, early lead when it comes to that gem count, and they've already turned in 24, 11 in the bank right now. Uh, great start on their end. I know someone in chat knows. How long has it been since? How many sets? Has MVP Black not lost? Twenty-seven. Not talking about games. 27. Twenty-seven sets without losing a yep. game. 
That is so stupid. Shout out to Gosu Gamers for all those stats. They've been tweeting them out. And, um, awesome. You know, Gosu Gamers Hots is so on, on point when it comes to all that coverage. These guys are monsters, but uh, E-Star, they're showing up. It's, uh, you know, I think everyone was a bit concerned after that game number one, as it was very stompy in favor of MVP Black, but E-Star's, you know, they were able to clear the head, fix their drafts a bit. But this is still a really good position for MVP Black. You know, they've done a lot of siege damage just because of this uh, interesting lane setup E-Star has done uh, with the 2-1-2. Two -two. It's very easy to pressure multiple lanes, and we're starting to see them take serious damage uh, because of that. Yeah. All right, well, there's already enough in the bank right now for Eastar to get those first web weavers. So in the event that a kill is picked up, they're going to be enabled to do just that. It's spread out between their team. Condemn attempt. It only connects on Silv, but it's enough for the kill. Great execution there with the rotation uh, on the side of MVP. Yep, yeah, Zingzi might go down as well. And uh, with Illidan jumping all over him, Rich going to secure another kill there. Two uh, kills to one now in favor of MVP Black there. Nice fight. And uh, they do uh, take a lead in the gem. Uh, or at least holding the gem count as 24 were turned in by E-Star. Um, both teams, uh, nope, E-Star having enough for turn in. MVP Black stole four gems away from that. They're going to have it very, very soon. But they're going to be the first team to hit level 7, and I don't know if E-Star can deny this turn in here from MVP Black. It's going to be tough. I mean, these rotations are scary. I mean, constantly NCCC being pressured as well. 49 in there right now. Just the one more needed, and it should be the first summon of Web Weavers on the side of MVP Black. Just controlling the, t the whole flow of the map ever since I picked up those two kills. It looks like Illidan in the bottom will get caught by, uh, with a bit of damage from Xiao Ti and Zing Si, but he is able to find his allies. One gem needed to be turned in here by MVP Black to get the turn in. I believe I did see Mary Day going for the cap. I don't know if it's going to get interrupted not showing him at all, so they uh, yeah. things he did end up getting that interrupt. Okay, hammering uh, has been spent. Top lane, Johanna trying to rotate up to get that turn in. If Thrall doesn't scout, yes, he will go look at that, so we know that that's going to be denied. Xiao T in the front, Roots zoning them out. Meriden needs to back away with uh, NCC diving in from the top, but where are the heals? Nowhere nearby, so he does have to run. Still only need 10 more gems for E-Star to get a turn in here. Rich trying to get a turn in the top. NCC trying to scout out nice stalls from Mary Day. Do they get the turn in? And yes, the first turn in of the game is going to go over to NBP Black. Yeah, nicely done there by Mary Day, realizing that he was completely safe to do that while the team was, you know, occupied in bot, and he enabled that turn in. So uh, that this is level 7 to 7, dead even right now in game number 3, but the Web Weavers are going to apply some strong pressure pushing on down. Talking a little bit about the Malfurion build. We're going to be seeing Moonburn at level 1 just for the lane clear. It's very important on this map. And we're going to be seeing a Loon's Grace at level 4. Uh, with this so much CC, having that increased range on your Entangling Race, I believe it's 30% um, when you'll be able easier for a Malfurion to follow up here. Two mean and Awkward Spot. Going to go ahead and Haunting Wave back. And uh, they're going to be trying to do up this top Web Weaver here as uh, Zal T is dealing with uh, mid. And it looks like Malfurion's dealing with bottom. Yeah, so this should pretty much guarantee MVP Black um, a level 10 advantage. Uh, not going to be a, a huge, a huge experience lead, like a huge window. Um, but unless they slip up and lose a hero or two, they're pretty much guaranteed that. Huge damage going in on Illidan. The Chain Bomb will not trigger on anyone else as they do split nicely. And the final Web Weavers are going to be eliminated. Mouth still in bot, just dealing with that bottom Web Weaver, and he will deal with that. MVP Black getting closer to level 10 here, but E-Star did a very good job of minimizing their losses. They're not too far behind, and MVP Black does not have enough gems on them because of those losses you talked about from before in the gem count uh, to get a second turn in here. Uh, but is Kyocha in a bad spot? He's already used the barrel roll here. Zalti looking for the power slide. He does get dismounted, nice. and the power slide doesn't connect. Nicely done there from Kyocha staying alive. Yeah, popping that static charge... Um was essential to the dismounting while he ran. Yes. Very well done by the false dead. Uh, Illidan up and top on Thrall, just trying to apply a bit of pressure here. Rich not going to be able to to burn down Thrall, but if they were, you know, out of lane, that's a fight where Thrall loses. He doesn't have the same kind of self-sustain that Illidan has in a 1v1 matchup. So it, it's, uh, it's good to have that pressure applied, especially as level 10 is locked in. I think this is just becoming a norm right now across all regions, seeing way of Force on Li Ming versus the ETC Mosh Pit. Um, even though you have the Mighty Gust as well as the Blessed Shield from Joanna to interrupt it, um, we still see consistently if uh, 
ETC is on the other team. Lee Mings are taking away the force, so no surprise there at all. Uh, good pressure from MVP Black, and they, I believe they almost are one gem off of having a turn in here. And they're doing a good job of keeping E-Star in their space. E-Star just struggling to find their place and how to force this fight whenever you know they're down a full level. They don't have 10. They're just now finally getting those heroics. Yeah, but 30 gems have been turned down instead of MVP 36, actually. So that is definitely very good for them. And we do have the another summon here of the Web Weavers back to back for MVP. So although level 10 has finally been achieved, it's a little bit too late to deny to, to goalkeep and deny these Web Weavers, and that's a bit problematic. Yeah, this is uh this could snowball this lead even further. I mean, we just saw Easter sitting around for a, a good minute there, waiting for um you know them to hit level ten. And if MVP Black gets thirteen off of this, Easter is going to just do more and more sitting around. And at this point, look how many gems are sitting on Jake. They have so many gems. So, and it's not only just becoming you know hard to fight whenever you're down on levels, but it's hard to fight because you don't want to lose these gems. Look at this. They have to rotate safely back to just deny Illid in the push in mid. Rich is going to be able to take out this mid fort. The flank happening from Sign looking to to flank around but Thrall is there as well they're actually trying to find Thrall they know that he's going to look for a big sundering and by the three of them going down through that lane just forces him to completely concede his position as well well this is going to be the second fort falling here for E star and maybe black and hit level 10 off of this level 12 off of this all three forts are pretty much down for it I barely oh, barely alive but yeah this is this is a really really tough spot for Eastar. they're full level down uh, they're they're going to be down 13 with a large window i love this call to leave sylvan top yeah they're just gonna get whatever value they can we see kyocha gonna fly up there to deal with that it's a four man versus a four man down here this web weaver doesn't have much health on it so it will go down here the stun goes on the merida the follow-up is there he's taking a decent amount of damage but they're not willing to hard commit to this tiger in the back line still not popping that uh Tranquility oh. there. Wailing Arrow comes up with no follow-up. Haunting Wave coming forward there. The Sundering does connect with Meriday. They've used a lot, and they still haven't killed him. Man, that Blast Shield was clutch and keeping Meriday alive. The gust coming down from Kyocha, but Meriday will end up falling to that Chain Lightning of Thrall. They've got the one kill. Sign is a bit secluded in the bottom. Can they collapse with the Wolf? No, nice juke there from Sign, but the Power Slide does go in with the Gravity Lapse, and that is a double kill. This is what I'm talking about when Kyocha has like really hit or miss performances on Fossil. That Gust did nothing. That might have actually killed off Mary Day. I there. actually I think, think Mary Day was fine. He pushed multiple members into Mary Day and like isolated the rest of his team. Um, yeah, this is what I talk about when, I'm, when I mentioned it before. Sometimes Kyocha looks really good on this hero, and sometimes uh, not the case. And that led to uh, Eastar getting two kills. Uh, you know, they're still down half a level, but yeah. they were able to get a tournament because of this. And this is this is big. They they close the experience gap quite a bit with the double kills. This is going to enable a quick level thirteen that just will push pretty safely with the web weavers. Get thirteen, then they're going to be happy to fight. Now heroic cooldowns, forty seconds on metamorphosis and twenty on divine shield, but it's much longer on the side of East Star for that mosh pit and that tranquility. We do see that uh, MVP Black just barely hitting level thirteen here, but the East Star going to get it very quickly. We'll see what damage they can do with this key in mind. You know, the Salas push is very powerful here. Kyocha's going to fly at bottom lane. This looks like it's going to be the lane of pressure here for E-Star. They can get some serious value with this. Both the other web weavers have been cleared out. Looks like top fort's actually being pressured by a minion wave, so that might actually go down for E-Star, but looks like MVP Black's ready to fight. Still have 35 seconds onto Mosh Pit here, so if MVP can get this fight here, that's exactly what they want. All right, the Wailing it has to go out early. Rich is going to pop that meta, absorb a lot of damage from KT, and Divine Shield has been cast just to enable him. Huge Sundering from the back side to really limit their presence pushing on in and if Xiaoti does have the power slide this could be a dead Illidan. Maybe not. Kelfos and Thrall both <laughs> going down. Tranquility doing the best it can but there's still so much burst coming out. Wave of Force not going to secure the kill on Tiger. It'll be a two for nothing exchange in favor of MVP Black. Uh, yeah. Webweaver still pushing bottom lane. Not going to be able to get out of this. I believe they have enough for a turn in. We'll just see they after this. Yeah they, they are they're up there. Um 36. They're not quite, not quite there yet. Uh, 75 in the pockets of E-Star. That's the one benefit they have going for them is they do have the gem count needed for a summon, but their final four will get pressured down here and they just need to back away. Now, that, that was a fight where a lot of the heroics were still on cooldown. We didn't have Mosh. Trank was cast, uh, but it was down for a little while at the initial start of the fight. And even with that, that nice thundering they had, it just wasn't enough to, to keep their, their assassins alive. Full level lead here for MVP Black as they're just about to hit level 15, getting closer and closer to those 16 tier talents. Looks like they were trying to get the turn in here. They're still down a lot of heroics here. Mosh Pit comes out, but not going to get anyone with it there. I love that play from Sign to go in with the Condemn oh. and interrupt that. And that's going to be the death of Zing <laughs> and a potential. Okay. Oh my goodness. We just saw a monstrous Blast Shield and Gust combo putting them all into the wall and just allowing Li Ming to go to town. That orb just shredded 
Looking through their health bars. 75 gems in the dumpsters, oh yeah. So I, I, I couldn't, I, it's hard to see from the screen share, but I think what happened there was Joanna popped Condemn and walked into the uh, mosh pit to interrupt it, yes, which was correct. sick. She did. That, uh, that she, was that was so well played. She was from, already casting it from. when Mosh was cast. Actually, it was like an instant interrupt. The Mosh did nothing. Yeah, that was sick. That I was think, um, not even close. Kyocho was out of it. I think he got cleansed and barrel rolled out of it. But it was either way. Just such a sick interrupt coming out from uh, Cyan here. So that's two level lead for MVP Black. I mean, they're up nine kills to three. Um, they do have enough for a turn in here. They're pushing with this boss in the top lane. At least riches for now. Uh, but uh, this could be multiple keeps here for MVP Black. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to be a big one. 40 gems in their pockets. They just turned into 17 out of 40. And they're pushing. Uh, key fortifications going down. These towers will fall before the web weavers are even present. And uh, this is just so hard. Level 16 is very far away for E-Star. Well, let's see uh, if E-Star can claw their way back into this game. They've got a long road to go. And like you said, keeps being pressured when they're down 15 to 17. Being down a talent tier at this point with this big of a talent tier for MVP Black is so difficult to deal with. And here come the Web Weavers, Jake. Yeah, they are a big threat. Thrall, you know, going to be looking for that flank, but Falstad immediately pressuring him in mid lane. And uh, the top Web Weaver has made its final approach to this keep, but it's actually being focused on rather nicely by the team. Well, the top of looks like there was a fight Gust. actually breaking up up there. No, Gust is a minute cooldown. Gust is a minute cooldown, so that's a big deal that that was spent just to get to keep, to restrict uh, Thrall's rotation up. I I don't know that he should look for a sundering flank. It's a little bit too risky. And uh, yes, it not looks, without sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't lose a keep though, Jake. That's pretty huge. Not yet. Um, they're gonna yet. try and pressure off mid here. Bottom keep still has that. Uh, I'll be repressuring it. Rich about half HP here. Toomey getting lit really hard there uh, from the poke from Falstad. So he's gonna have to go ahead and base. But uh, as long as East Star doesn't lose any keeps here, yeah. they're still very much in this game. Now they are very much down in experience, but yeah, it's there's there's no critical disadvantage for them quite yet. Gravity Labs completely whiffing there as it is cast and Illidan just able to juke on out. And yeah, great defense. I mean, level 16 is just about reach. Uh, they've they've absorbed basically 65 or 60 gems that didn't really do a whole lot. They got some some towers and pushed out the lanes, but it's you know the pressure's been handled. And we're finally on the same tier here to see uh, what E Star plans to force themselves back into this game. They only have one fort down, Jake, which is going to be a struggle for them. If they do end up winning a team fight, they only have one avenue to a keep right now, which is through bottom lane. Yeah, and the other problem is just Illidan has so much room to, you know, just jump around and do what he does best. So that's that's tough. But at the same time, those forts are, you know, little experience banks waiting for E Star to to collect. Um, and if they can they can withdraw their their savings Stop. bonds, then. Oh my god. Power slide goes down onto Rich there. He's diving pretty deep. Nice hunting wave into the back. Tranquility popped very early in this fight, Jake. Yeah, and that's why you see the full on retreat. They just want to absorb that heroic gust is going to be spent as a response. So a 100 second cooldown for a 60 second cooldown. Definitely a favorable trade there on the side of MVP Black. This is why picking Mouth versus Falstad is problematic. Yeah. And uh, That's a long time they can't fight. 70 seconds. MVP Black. Probably will have enough gems by then for another turn in. And the great poke coming out from Sake so far. I'm really impressed with how he's been playing Li Ming this game. Um, he has had fantastic poke and has secured his team several kills. They're going to go ahead and uh, back off here. Um, one of the issues whenever you're trying to uh, you know, get through these gems here is you're consistently pushing in the lane of your opponent. So sometimes it's harder to get those gems. But they only need uh, 13 more, Jake. And they have a turn in. Yeah, uh, only two more needed on the side of E-Star as well, who are attempting. The, this is a small window, right? 20 isn't here yet. No Storm Talents for MVP Black. That's why you're starting to see E-Star, like, the, it almost feels like they're, they're forced to push out, but it's another 30 seconds before they have that Tranquility up. And they cannot sustain a fight against Leeming, Fawcett, Illidan without Tranquility. There's no way. This Malfurion pick is really kind of hurting E-Star. Yeah, I agree. See, so, uh... If Easter can do anything to claw their way back into this game, do they have enough for a turn in? I don't think so. 
Maybe Black's still needing a few more gems Ten until more, they can yeah. get that. Uh, but they're they're okay with being patient. You know, they're on the same tier. They're not willing to fight right now. Uh, they definitely want to get uh, level 20 before they have to fight, which means tranquility will be up as it is uh, just about to come off cooldown. And uh, MVP Black still trying to get those gems. They need uh, five more and uh, level 20, and that's when we're going to see MVP Black finally make their move. Star has to fight now. They, they need to find someone. They need to just, just do it. Just commit. Just push. Just go ham. Find someone out of position. Rich is just waiting, uh, keeping that eye out. The orb will deny a, some of the gems turned in. Nicely done there by Mary Day as well. And level 20 is just getting too close. That's something we talk too much on, but uh, I'm curious why the swap between Zalti and NCC in their roles for this game. Yeah, it's um, got to be preference. We see it sometimes when, like, with Cloud9, like, Caffeine will play Thrall, but it's definitely interesting. I'm curious if uh, anyone has more information on that specific swap. They're probably, like you said, preference, but... Uh, MVP Black here, they get their final turn in here, um, and they're going to have 20. I mean, this is such a monstrous push coming from them. It, it should at least be double keep, if not triple, and yeah. could be the game. I'd be shocked if we don't see double keep with a storm tier advantage um, and like the amount of poke they have too. Like, Xiaozi is actually forced to absorb Li Ming's abilities. He's just doing his best. Oh, we got the to... Li Ming uh, wave of force upgrade too. That's sounds so hilarious. Oh, it's like 10 miles of radi range and radius. All right, there we see a blood shield is. going in. Doesn't do a whole lot. Zingsi is very low on the on the backside, so Illidan could look to make that his target as he transfers around. Toomey actually goes back into the Hall of Storms, but the top keep has gone down, and the other two webweavers haven't even been touched yet. Well, uh, they're trying to fight here. Um, we do see Divine Shield was used on Illidan here. Immediately, Rich is going to back out. NCC very far forward. Sundering is going to push away Mary Day. Can they get the kills they want here? Rich going over the wall. Sign doing a good job of zoning. Gus comes out. That Web Weaver in mid is going to go down, so they don't lose that. That's a Tranquility pop there. I don't know why Tiger popped that. I don't know either. Did. And the beautiful. That was really bad. It was a huge Iron Skin there as well, denying the Power Slide of ETC. It would have been a pickup on Johanna with because the Body Box would have been there for sure after that Power Slide of Roots. Not even going to connect on Mary Day. And we do see the oh. Wolf comes out. Flames Strike will secure the kill, so that's a nice win. They managed to keep two of their keeps alive and pick up the kill on Mariday. Somehow, Eastar does sustain. Yeah, this is good for Eastar, Jake. Uh, Mariday went um, the upgrade to uh, Divine Shield, Bulwark of Light. He didn't go Redemption. He's dead for 50 seconds. Yeah. If that's exactly what Eastar needs. This game's not over, guys. They may be down a talent here, but Uther's dead for 40 seconds, and they have enough gems for a turn in. They can potentially make something happen with this. With the Sylvanas, if they go bottom lane with a Web Weaver, if they can get a turn in here, or even more kills. All right. This 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 is still in a game. Eastar is very much in. Tiger is low on mana now. We do see uh, Iron Skin popped early. They find the, the beautiful lockdown there. Great stun, denying that mosh pit of Xiao T, which could have been huge, killing False Dead. Rich meddling into the backside, running, drawing them away. And but they're so split. Tiger again is completely out of mana, forced to ice block. Actually gets condemned in. Rich could dive over the wall and kill multiple members, but he's way too low to consider that without a support. Wow, I can't believe MVP Black stalled out that long. That gives them time to get Uther back into the fray. They're still very far from a turn-in of their own, but Eastar has enough for a turn-in, almost enough for two turn-ins. They have, they're about to hit level 20, and they have um, you know, everyone alive, which is good for them. They're, they're still in this game, but MVP Black did a great job of stalling that out. They needed to get Mary Day back into the fight. I can't believe and, they chased Illidan. I, it's like, that's the classic mistake. It's uh, just, yeah. <laughs> well, it, I mean, a big part of that was just Malpha having no mana. Um, he, he cast like a heal and a root, and he was he was done. And Sign is just scouting this out, well aware of what they're doing. Level twenty is finally picked up here. Um, they're gonna be able to at least control these two lanes That's for now. That's a lot of bolts. Oh yeah, that is a lot That's of bolts. Four bolts of the storm. Kelthos no longer being able to get bolts of the storm. Uh, normally we see the Chain Bomb talent at that tier. Master of um, Flame. Sometimes going we for see Arcane, Arcane Power. He's going there for it. Is. Yeah, they recently buffed Arcane Power. Uh, it's going to give him Burst. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll spell the difference between a dead Illidan and not. We'll find out. Well, all Eastar needs to do is win a fight or get like some advantage where they can get turn-ins. Because they have back-to-back turn-ins, Jake. And that could really save them right now. Um, one turn in right now would not be enough to save them because their waves are so far pushed in. You know, it, it would take most of the Web Weaver's health just to get to the forts. Um, but having two is great. Um, so they that's what they're looking to do is try and win a fight here. Um, still a long road to go until MVP Black has enough for a turn in. But Jake, there's no way they sneak this in, right? 
Well, 126 in the pocket. The boss will be completely oh, the God, get it. snuck in. And they do find Johanna. Iron skin being popped early. Sign taking huge damage. And the gust from Kyocha will save Sign at the last moment. The boss is picked up. The top keep is down. And they don't even turn in a single gem. They don't turn in any gems. This is a 23-minute boss going straight on to core. I mean, it doesn't matter if every heroic's up on E-Star. They need to commit now. They need to get a monster mosh pit and win the game. Because if this boss gets the core, it doesn't matter. With Rich here uh, being able to help DPS with it, this boss could be devastating. Rich going in deep. He's getting very, very low. Already get, getting lit. Almost dies straight up. That's going to help a lot. Boss is half HP. E-Star's doing the best they can to clear it up. But uh, MVP Black, uh, we see Rich immediately going for the core. Zingzi doing a lot of damage to him. It's falling very fast. Leaming Poke doing a lot as well. 80% on the core. Wailing Arrow comes out. Can they wipe this up? They get Falstad. Sign trying to go down as well. But the core is at 40%, Jake. The boss is still healthy. And I think MVP Black has done it. Just like that, the boss pays off, and the MVP Black keeps their match streak going. E-Star, they managed to grab a single game, which is a nice victory for them, ending the 100, or not 100, 40 plus what? winning streak. That, that music tilted me, man. Yeah, I mean... Kyocha played the last two fights very well with those gusts. I mean, stalling out multiple deaths. All it took is one extra death on Joanna in both those last two fights, and that would have been a bit much significantly better situation for E-Star. The fact that they didn't contest the boss really, really was bad. Um, they tried to go for a pick instead of it, and they almost killed Joanna. They would have probably held core if Joanna was dead, uh, but that gust timing from Kyocha was just perfect. Um, so really well done there from MVP Black. It was, a, it was a closer game than people probably realized. It, it, they had 20 finally, um, but they weren't able to get much out of it. They I'm were curious as to why they didn't commit to bolts as well to maybe secure the kill on Joanna after they knew they lost boss. But Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that would. I mean, it could have made the difference. Who knows? But um, they just made a few mistakes here and there. MVP Black uh, got away with just about everything. Went that, it really came down to that one team fight where the Mosh did nothing. And basically, the entire team of V-Star got clumped and just blown up uh, from Leeming, Illid, and Falstead. From, they lost 75 gems, I believe, and they didn't get another yeah. turn in at that point in time. They didn't actually turn in a single gem after that point. Yeah, it was rough. Guys, yeah, this is only a best of three for those of you just tuning in. Um, so that's going to be FNP Black taking the series 2-1. Uh, you know, but, you know, E-Star, despite outside of game one, game two and two was really good. And, of course, they stomped MVP Black. And game three was closer than people realized. It wasn't a full-on stomp, um, despite, you know, the full lead that MVP Black had most of that. You know, they were they were clinging on, and uh, they definitely had moments where they could have turned that around. Uh, but uh, MVP Black's going to go undefeated in the group, uh, and E-Star is going to get second seed. But that's so, not it for today, guys. We have uh, two more sets coming up. Yeah. Yeah, but I I, this is still like um, a great spot for E-Star. Like they, they've they've proven they can go toe to toe with anyone. Um, I think a slightly better draft if they didn't have Mouth, uh, they probably actually that the game would have been way better for them. Um, and I'm in, I'm impressed. I mean, they they absolutely rolled uh, MVP Black in game number two. Yeah, it was. Uh... I mean, you can't give Illidan the God Comp, right? That's uh, way too too good of a draft uh, for Illidan to have on that map specifically. Um, they just kind of had full control of the game from the get-go. Uh, so really well done for B-Star, though. I mean, outside of game number one, I think their drafting was much better. Malfurion, again, didn't Did get too much Beastar? value. Uh, Mighty Gust every fight to isolate him. You know, Constantly out of mana. Yeah, it's true, man. It's a struggle. A uh, no man of mouth is. Oh, loud noises. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I... Oh.